In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so this morning we gather to celebrate the Mass of Monday of the first week of Advent. And at the start of our Mass, we take a moment to collect ourselves, to acknowledge our unworthiness, our sin, and to pray for God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord our God, as we await the advent of Christ your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, the branch of the Lord will be luster and glory, and the fruit of the earth will be honor and splendor for the survivors of Israel. He who remains in Zion and he who is left in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone marked down for life in Jerusalem When the Lord washes away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purges Jerusalem's blood from her midst with a blast of searing judgment, then will the Lord create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over her place of assembly, a smoking cloud by day and a light of flaming fire by night. For over all, the Lord's glory will be shelter and protection shade from the parching heat of day, refuge and cover from storm and rain. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem, Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it, the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Come and save us, Lord our God. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, My servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go and he goes, and to another come here and he comes to my slave do this and he does it when Jesus heard this he was amazed and said to those following him amen I say to you and no one in Israel have I found such faith I say to you many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham Isaac and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> and so we've begun the Advent season once again. And each one of us can sit back and say, well, how many Advents have I had in my life? How many Christmases? And Am I still the same person that I've always been? Or have all these Advents and all these Christmases made a change in me, made me a better woman, made me a better man? Am I closer now to God than I was when I began Advent of 2021? Or do I just kind of go through the motions year after year after year? This morning we prayed a little prayer at the Alleluia verse just before the reading of the gospel. And that little prayer said simply this, come and save us, Lord our God. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. As we get to this time of the year, every year, Advent, as we prepare to celebrate another Christmas every year. Isn't that, in fact, what we are commemorating? Come and save us, Lord our God. Another few weeks, we're gonna celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ into the world, the savior of the world. We need to reflect upon that reality of the need that this world has for a savior. To be saved from what? To be saved from the effects of our sins. To be saved into the reality of a heaven that awaits us. That had been lost. When God created and placed man in the garden of paradise, That, in fact, was heaven. And because of his sinfulness, God banned him from that paradise. We lost heaven. We needed to have some kind of a saving action occur in this world to win it back for us. And so we hear the psalmist today in that alleluia verse saying, Come and save us, Lord our God. We need a savior. 
And that Savior came. Jesus was that Savior. And he was no less than the Son of God himself. The Word that became flesh and made his dwelling among us, that's our Savior. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the effects of our sin, which was the loss of heaven. Jesus came and carried out his three-year ministry in this world. He suffered and died on the cross and sacrificed his life for the salvation of the human race. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. And we have been saved. You know, some of our other Christian friends were not Roman Catholics. They like to use the phrase and ask the question, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? It's a good question to ask. And hopefully if we've heard that question, we have answered it properly. Yes, I have. You and I, each of us has a personal savior. We also have a collective savior. Jesus' actions were for the salvation of the entire human race. So he's our savior, he's my savior. Yes, indeed, we have been blessed by a good God that loved us so much that he allowed his only son, Jesus, to take on flesh, sacrifice his life. Today, between the readings, we prayed a psalm, Psalm 122, and we repeated the phrase, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We can do that again. We can go rejoicing to the house of the Lord because of the saving actions of Jesus Christ. So we're into the season now where we commemorate his birth. We're into the season now that we prepare also for his second coming. It's Advent. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We can and we will because of the saving actions of the Savior of the world, Jesus. That's the season that we've moved into again now. We've lived through many of them in the past. It's not our first Advent. Hopefully it won't be our last. We do the preparation to celebrate the coming of the Son of God into the world. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. We can do that again simply because someone has come into the world as its savior. We prayed in the Alleluia verse, come and save us, Lord our God. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. He's done that. How blessed we are to have a savior. How blessed we are to enter into another advent to prepare us to celebrate another Christmas, the birth of that special one, that savior in the world. His name is Jesus. And as has been quoted over the years, he really is the reason for the season. Come and save us, Lord our God. It's already happened. It doesn't have to happen again. We just simply have to accept it in our lives and follow him as the one who will lead us into the glory of the kingdom. Come and save us. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. It's already happened. You've been saved. I've been saved. All we have to do now is live lives that acknowledge that salvation won for us and then prepare ourselves to enter joyfully into the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing. Christmas was only about four weeks away, celebrating the birth of the one who brought all this about for us. We are his followers. We are the ones who identify with him, Jesus the Christ, the Savior of the world. Mighty bless us all this morning. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit,
With trust, humility, and faith, we now offer our petitions to the Father, that God may continue to guide the Church in her mission to carry out the work of Jesus Christ on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may inspire people of all nations to come to know the saving power of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. that the Holy Spirit may grant faith as strong as the centurion to all who suffer and send them the healing they seek. Let us pray to the Lord. And that God may grant this community a charism of hospitality to be a place where all are welcomed. Let us pray to the Lord. And that all who have died may rejoice as they join the communion of saints in the fullness of God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. And we offer our special prayers this morning for Daniel Erozo, for whom today's Mass is being offered. For Daniel, let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, all power and authority are yours. Look with favor upon the petitions we offer you today through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it'll become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it'll become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation. Always and every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For he assured and assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago 
and open for us the way to salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, was honor in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, was honor in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please offer each other now some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And may the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy, you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended now. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.